Hi everyone, Mrs. Kane here. Um, for those of you that missed the fourth grade and fifth grade session of Art Club today, I just wanted to give you a very um, brief little presentation on what we did in case you wanna do it on your own. The first thing that we talked about is creating a portrait and what a portrait is. A portrait is a picture of a person. It can also be a picture of an animal or a character. Um, a self portrait is a picture of yourself. And that's what we are gonna be creating today. Notice, notice the position of these portraits. They're all taken from either the shoulder area and above or the waist and above. A portrait is not a full body picture. Okay, so we're not drawing arms and poses or um, standing you know, in different positions. It's just from the waist or the shoulders up. This picture on the left is of Frida Kahlo, very famous Mexican artist. And you can see her portrait is slightly more realistic um, in the painting. This is Pablo Picasso. He is um, very famous for the cubist style, which is how he's done his portrait here. This is Vincent van Gogh. Many of you know him from Starry Night. And you can see the swirling pattern he has, the text, the visual texture here done in his portrait is similar to that of his painting of Starry Night. And this is Mary Cassette, who is creating her portrait in the Impressionist style, which is um, very soft and sort of, um, it's sort of a fuzzy sort of look to it. We are going to be creating a self-portrait today. Um, and what we're going to be focusing on is animation and creating some different um, features. But we want to try and add a specific detail to our picture that's going to make this symbolize us or something that will make um, people be able to recognize that we were doing a picture of ourselves. We are going to do this in a Tim Burton style. Um, because it's close to Halloween, I thought this would be fun. Um, Tim Burton's char characters are slightly creepy and interesting. Um, he always uses very, very large eyes and extremely long um, elongated necks in his characters. Um, so we are going to replicate that in our artwork today. Um, if you are not a fan of Tim Burton or you don't want to do a spookier type of picture, I also included a picture on Schoology of some cartoon um, type features. So you could just do an animation character. Even if you look at Disney characters, uh, Moana from um, the sisters from Frozen, um, you can see that their eyes are always very large. So some of the characteristics in these characters as well as other animation characters are similar. Here are some Tim Burton's um, style head shapes, eyes, noses, and mouths that you can reference for your picture. These are all located on Schoology if you want to reference this sheet. And the animals were for our third graders. I am going to quickly show you how to get started. You will start with a pencil and then you can darken it up using a black colored pencil. I'm going to draw today just using a black colored pencil um, because I think that it's a little bit easier for you to see. I want you to remember that colored pencil is not erasable. So you can see some of my very sketchy lines here. I would maybe want to clean up and I won't be able to do that. Um, when I draw with a black colored pencil. But I am going to draw this oval shaped head. I have a very oval shaped head. You can look back at the reference sheet if you want. If you have more of a roundish head, you would turn your oval sideways this way, okay? Now, I came down to a pointy chin. As I said, the necks are very skinny and very elongated in his character. So you're gonna add a long skinny neck and then Making the self-portrait, you're going to curve down on each side for the shoulders. Right here, you're going to either add a line or you can add a small triangle, and that shows the negative space between your arm and your body. So the space between your arm and that body, right in between where your arm and your body is. And then you can add any details for clothing that you want here. Um, you may add something I have on one of my examples, a scarf. So you may add some sort of scarf. Okay, you can add whatever details you want for clothing. Now, his eyes 
are very large. Now, when we're proportioning a face, we would never draw eyes quite this large, but we're still going to look at the center of the face, right? And this is about where the eyes would start coming up. We don't want our eyes to be way up here in the forehead. So you have to have your eyes posi positioned just above this center point here. And I'm just going to, in Tim Burton fashion, make a large dot for the pupil and to make the character look more female, I'm gonna add some eyelashes, okay? Now, Tim Burton's noses are so simple, they are just created using line. So I'm only going to make this elongated line, okay, to create the nose. Again, you may add different shapes. You can twist the style into your own a little bit, however you want. And then I'm going to add a very small mouth. He typically has smaller shaped mouths and I'm going to turn this into more of a Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas by adding some stitch marks on the neck and face. Give it a little bit of a Halloween creepy feel. Now for me, because this I'm trying to represent myself, I'm going to add some freckles because I have freckles. You may have a birthmark or a mole or a dimple or something that you can add to your face that's going to make this look a little bit more like you. And then his hair is done very um, with large forms. I always wear a side ponytail, so I'm going to draw these larger forms. Now I have curly hair, so I'm going to add some curls. Notice I'm not drawing all strands of hair. I'm drawing these in large chunks instead of individual strands of hair, right? And that is more of a Tim Burton style to add large chunks with some lines added in. I had a student ask during class if they could draw ears. Yes, of course we can draw ears into the picture. When you look in the mirror though, Remember, you don't see the ears sticking straight out. They're tucked in on the side, so you only see a slight bump come out on the side. And here's my hair coming out on the other side. Okay, now Tim Burton, if we did this on a gray paper, we could add in a lot of cool details using a white um, colored pencil. But you could use your black to color in and just shade in some skin tone. Um, giving it that real creepy feel. If you wanted to do this more like Sally from um, Nightmare Before Christmas, she has a blue tone to her skin. So you can lightly shade in using a colored pencil. You could also just use the graphite from your regular pencil to do this. But remember when you get up against certain areas of your face that are not flat, like your nose or where you have different impressions around your eyes. You can press a little darker or layer to make some shadows, maybe up along the hairline is a little darker. So if you color those areas in, pressing harder and then pressing very, very light everywhere else, you're going to add those details of value that really make pictures look more interesting, okay? So you can add in, and of course, underneath the chin would be darker as well, and then your neck would lighten up as you went down because you have the shadow from the face. And then you can go in and add some pops of color. You can add a background. I would go in and maybe add some lights and darks of the red into the hair um, and add some of those details. You can make this look very Halloween-y, um, add some spiders, or you can add some pumpkins in the background. Okay, and really turn this into a fun Halloween picture. Here is another example that is larger. And here is an example of um, the male character that I drew from The Corpse Bride. And you can see this was just done in black and white. But the reason that I wanted to show this is because for um, 
some of our hair, if we have short hair like this, just to show how that would look without drawing the longer hair coming down. And if you choose, you may decide to do this in more of just a happy cartoon featured picture if you are not interested in Tim Burton. All right, I hope you have fun with it and I'll see you all next week.